For this red mushroom, we're going to start with some scarlet and do wet on dry. Basically, we're just going to take the red color and start outlining the shape of our mushroom. We're gonna spread out this color as best we can, and then we'll add some water and start lightening the color and spreading it out a little bit. So the top of this mushroom is basically red. You're going to use different strengths of the red paint in order to add your variation. You'll use water and then the straight paint in order to just change things up a little bit. Here I'm dropping just a little bit of red in there because I want that section of the mushroom to be a little brighter. And then I'm gonna go back up to my outline and keep adding color. So when, when you're doing dimension in watercolor and paintings, you want one side to be a little darker than the other side. That will help add the shape to your form that will make it look more three-dimensional. Um, understand that as watercolor dries, it gets a little lighter. So as I'm applying the color, I'm gonna adjust it as one side dries over the other. Uh, and then I'm going to lay on my elbow and put my elbow in the picture because I don't know why I did that in this video, but it is definitely popping in and out quite a bit throughout this video. Now here I'm making my brush strokes up and down again to add the form. I want the mushroom to shape to look like it's going up and down a little bit right there. Now I'm going to clean up a couple of the lines. I'm going to get more water. Using the water, I'm going to start spreading out the paint that is already on my watercolor paper. Once again, this won't be a completely even layout of paint. We're not doing an even wash. We want the variations. And I know it looks a little awkward right here, but that's okay. As it adds with the layers and everything else, you'll see the shape of the mushroom start to form and then suddenly it'll just pop up off the page. Here I grabbed some of the tangerine because I wanted to add a little bit more color flare to this mushroom. I know that it looks like it's completely red, but it's not and the addition of this tangerine color just in this couple corners makes it look so much more alive. I tried to keep the orange just to the two corners of the top of the mushroom hat. So now we're gonna start with the saddle brown and start adding a subtle shadow on the top corner of our stem. We're gonna put the brown in pretty dark right underneath the top of the mushroom cap. This is going to give it a shadow under there and then we're gonna start pulling that color down with more water and just filling in the rest of the mushroom in a way that you're getting a light wash of color over the mushroom. Using the brown, you wanna outline the edge of your mushroom. This is again gonna give it the depth and form and make it look a little round. I added a couple little darker spots right in the center to kind of make it look like the mushroom had damage to the stem. And we're going to keep pulling that, getting more water on our brush and pulling that color out and then adding a dark to the other side of the mushroom stem and some lines again to add some texture to this mushroom stem.
using the water, we blend that out and make it a nice smooth look, uh, but the lines are still there. Here we grab the smaller brush and we're going to add a little bit more of the dark saddle brown right underneath the, the mushroom cap to give it that dimension. I'm putting this color in in a triangular shape to mimic or reflect the shadow that the top of the mushroom cap would be casting onto your mushroom stem. It's not completely necessary, but it adds that little bit of dimension. And with this, it makes it look more 3D and more rounded. Now I'm going into the bottom with my little brush and adding a little bit more lines, again, to add some texture to the stem of this mushroom. Here we're just going in with the water and trying to smooth it out so we don't have those harsh lines, but making it look a little bit more finished and polished. Next, you wanna grab your Payne's Gray or and whatever brush you have the most control with, and we're gonna add an outline to the edge of the mushroom cap. This is gonna make it stand out and separate a little bit from the stem and give it a thickness. So you're gonna use your Payne's Gray and basically you're just gonna go through and outline right around the edge of your mushroom cap. As you can see, I'm not trying to make this line perfect. I want it a little jagged and rugged and I want the color to be dark and light, and this will give me more of what the form is that I'm looking for as I do this. So once again, you're just using the, the Payne's Gray and outlining the edge of this mushroom, going up a little, going down a little, not worrying about keeping that edge completely flat and straight. Feel free to go back over that line you did a second time to make sure that it's as dark as you want it to be. The darker it is, the more contrast you're going to have and the better it will look. Now you're gonna to wanna to grab some Payne's Gray and we're gonna add in some shadows on one side of our mushroom. Just kind of dab this in here in a varying pattern. Try not to make it too exact. You want the variation. So I'm doing this whole side of this mushroom to give it that variation. I grabbed some water to spread it out so it wasn't super dark, but I'm using Payne's Gray as that shadow color. We're gonna to continue to add shadow with a really watered down Payne's Gray in uh, the lower part of the left side of your mushroom. This is gonna just add a little bit more of the form. 
So just continue in adding in the shadows until it feels the way that you like it. I'm being very, very, very subtle with these shadows, making it not super bright. I'm gonna continue up towards the top just a little to give it a little bit of rounding, but put, feel where you feel like the shadows should go and put the shadows in accordingly. Now we're going to step away from the mushroom cap and move on to our snail. I'm getting a bright, bright grass green, and I'm going to just lay in the color for the base of our snail. I wanted the snail to be fairly light, so I dropped in color right at the edge and then started using water and my smaller brush to try to just pull this color out a little further throughout the rest of the snail shape. And we're just doing the body right now, not the shell. Under the base of the shell, add a little bit of a darker or more pigmented, less watered down version of your green in order to really add a shadow where that shell is going to attach. Because we use tangerine in the mushroom cap, we wanna use it in another location within the painting. So right now I'm taking my small brush and using the tangerine and basically outlining the circular spiral pattern of the snail shell. Once you have it outlined to your liking, I then got a larger brush uh, and dipped it in water and started to spread out the color that I'd laid down to make the lines not so harsh and basically add a wash to the whole shape of the snail shell. Honestly, looking back at it now as I'm doing this voiceover, I can tell you that I should have stopped here on the snail. I ended up adding too much color later. So if you like the way that this looks, don't add any more later on. I ended up overworking the snail shell just a little bit. So if it works better for you to not add more color, then don't do it. That being said, once the base of your snail is dry, you can get some more color and start darkening it up. Definitely you wanna do that towards the base of the snail to add a shadow and maybe underneath the shell to also add a shadow.
Now the base of your mushroom should have dried significantly at this point. And you can go in if you want to add more shadow and more definition. Grab some more of the brown and just darken it up. As you put in colors, you'll see that sometimes your darks need to get darker. Uh, and that's one of the good things. The more mid-tones you put in, the easier you can tell. So I'm making I'm even more accentuating this triangle shape here to give the shadow cast from this really large mushroom cap onto the stem. Once you've added in that shadow, you can grab some water and try to blend it down a little bit so you don't have super harsh lines. Then you can go in with your brush with a little bit more brown and add actual lines within the trunk of your mushroom in order to give it that texture that you're looking for. Now we get to do the fun part. So right now, you can't see my palette, but I'm getting a bunch of bleed proof white, putting it on the palette and watering it down just a little bit so that it's runny enough so that I can dip my sea sponge in it. So I'm getting the bleed proof white, dipping a sea sponge in it, not dipping it crazy. And then I'm just going to pat it onto the mushroom and this little pop of white is really going to add so much to this painting. It really pops it out and adds so much more to it. Once you're sure that the white you've put on has dried, the red is dry, and your mushroom cap and stem are dry, you can get some more of the Payne's Gray and just darken this line in again. By darkening in this line, again, your darks get darker while your lights got lighter, and it's going to give you a lot more form and function throughout this painting. If you can't get to the angle you want, bonus of using watercolor paper is just turn the paper so you can get your hands where you want them and you can paint how you want. That's one of the things I love about painting with watercolor.
From here, you're pretty much done. You can go in and look at your painting, take a step back from your painting, see where you think it needs more shadow, more color, and go in and add those little fine tuning details. Try to make sure you take a step back from it so you don't end up overworking it. But at this point, your painting should be just about where you want it to and you should be able to get those last little details in that make it look just the way you want. Don't forget to sign it. And as we're finishing up these last details, I just want to say thank you for joining me and painting this little snail. And I hope everybody had a good time. <laughs>